This is my dirty Zappy, and this is my dirty Megan. And unfortunately, the Megan does not like the Zappy on a charging timer. Now I've had the Megan for about three months now, and I've tried charging on the Zappy a few times, and on one time it did work, but on the other two times it didn't work. So let me show you how to do a charging timer in the Megan and then we'll try it tonight and we'll see if it works. So you might be wondering why you want to do a charging timer in the first place. Well, if you're able to charge at home, if you can do a charging timer overnight, then it means that you can charge off peak and that saves you quite a lot of money. So off peak for us is four hours between half past midnight and half past four. And that's at the moment, seven and a half pence, I think. Is it more than that now? It's cheaper than the day rate. Anyway, that's the most important thing. Um, it's much, much cheaper than the day rate. So if you can do that, it's worth doing. So all EVs, as far as I know, all EVs have charging timers and um, they all work in roughly the same way, but this is how you do it in the Megane. Here's your kind of home screen thing. And if you go to electric and then charge and climate, you can go to program. And as you can see, I've actually already set it here. Um, you can go to instant charge and then that'll just charge the moment you plug in but I've got a program set. So let's go to my programs. I'm going to delete the program I already had just to start from scratch. So let's go to new program and we'll click here and we'll go between and we want to go, oops, half past for me anyway, half past midnight to half past four. Let's go to save. And then that's set to repeat on every single day of the week, including the weekends. But you know, it could be that I might not want to do that. I might not want to do the weekends for some reason, but I'll do that every day of the week and I press save. So you'll see that that's now set a charging timer. It's all very simple um, for those four hours every day of the week and it's just going to charge then. If I get a new program I can also set a climate uh, control there as well so it means that if we get to the car in the morning let's say we leave at eight o'clock and we can make sure it's nice at this time of year maybe we want something a bit cooler so maybe 19 degrees but I'm not going to bother with that, but that's what you can do as well. So it's all very simple. At least it would be if it worked. But unfortunately it hasn't worked on a few occasions. So the way I've had to charge at home is by using my Omi. Now you may have seen this and I've not actually mentioned it before. This is a 32 amp commando socket. And a commando socket is normally used for, I don't know, well like a caravan or um, kind of outside events and things like that. So it's it's one of those things. It's quite a heavy duty socket and we installed this because we had the caravan. And not only that, it was because the caravan was in the way and um, we had the Ionic 5 and we couldn't actually uh, charge it with the lead. Our, our normal charging lead was not long enough to get to the Zappi. So I got an Omi and at the time you could get an Omi for £199, a commando one. Uh, through Octopus. Now they don't do that anymore as far as I'm aware. But I just remembered I've still got it. So I know that McGann has issues with the Zappi but I think it will work with the Omi. So I'm going to give that a go. In the deep dark depths of the garage is our Omi. So that goes in there. Oh, difficult doing this one-handed. There. It's a bit stiff but that's gone in. And then to get it to work, you've got to turn this like that. And you can just see there, there we go. When I have charged at home, I've had to use that, not the Zappi. And this is a well-known problem apparently with the Zappi. And I, it possibly affects other chargers as well. And it's not Zappi's fault. It is something that Renault are fixing themselves and it's gonna be available in a software update. But the Megane's been out for quite a while now and it still hasn't been fixed. so it's. Renault are really taking their sweet time about it. Anyway, we're going to try it tonight. We'll see if it works. So let's plug in and see what happens. Okay, let's get the charging cable. The question is, is it going to reach? Is it going to reach? It's not, is it? Oh, not close enough. And the other thing you might want to do is go to electric um, battery and you might want to set a maximum charge level as well so I'm going to set that to 
Oops. 80%. If you're new to EVs, you might be wondering why you'd want to set a charge level in the first place. Battery health is just something to be aware of. Don't get too worried about it particularly, but just don't leave an EV sat at 100% for a long period of time. Um, so if you're going to leave it for several days, don't charge it up to 100%, charge it up to something like 80 um, and then that still gives you plenty of battery to uh, to go on most of your journeys. And then if you're going to go on a long journey, then maybe charge to 100% just before. Battery degradation is is when a battery gets um, worse and worse over time, it gets, you get less capacity over time. And the older batteries, like the one in my old Nissan Leaf, were not great for that. Newer EVs, you don't have to worry quite so much about it. But um, And especially some EVs have an LFP battery. That's a different type of chemistry. LFP batteries are actually quite happy to be left at 100% and they don't uh, degrade as much as other batteries do. So there you go. A little bit of geeky, geeky stuff for you there. Um, if you're leasing an EV um, or have it on subscription like I have with this Megane, then you could just maybe say, well, who cares? And uh, just do whatever you want with it. But uh, it's just something to bear in mind. If you own an EV and you want to make it last as long as possible, then it's good to just charge up to 80. By the way, same for laptops and things like that. Um, they don't like being sat at 100% for a long time either. So it's just a whole lithium battery thing. I'll just show you them, we've got 24%. So let's see what it's like tomorrow morning. That goes in. We've got these little indicators here to tell you all the different things. Blue light means it's on a charging timer. Let's see what the Zappy is doing. Well, the Zappy is saying charging, you see? But it shouldn't be charging. Now, in the car, it says start of charge, 3 hours 47 minutes, which would be correct. So, we'll see what happens, shall we? Good morning. Right, let's see if it charged last night. It'd be sod's law, it actually did charge. Wouldn't it? No, it didn't. So let's have a look at the zappy. That's what the zappy says. Now it says charging. Um, I think it said stop charging last night when I looked at the app. But now it says charging. It seems to be when the car is turned on and you know when I approach the car that is, then it starts charging a tiny amount. So I don't know whether that's connected to it. The screen is extremely dusty. I really need to clean this car, don't I? Yeah, you'll see we've still got 23%. Was it, is that what it was last night? Was it 24% last night? Anyway, we we've, we've haven't charged anything, that's the point. Still says start of charge. So, yeah, that confirms that it just doesn't work on a zappy. So, this is just a problem when it's on a charging timer. So if I plug it in, and then I press that, that's going to turn off the charging timer temporarily and it should start charging. Or it's going to flash red to say there's some sort of error. Charge delayed. Why is that charge delayed? Charging station default. What does that even mean? Okay, right. Well, let's try it again. Okay, well, hopefully, there we go. Pulsating blue, there we go, that's working. But as you can see, it's pretty glitchy. But you can see that is now at least charging. Okay, but I don't want to charge right now because of course it's expensive. So I want to do it on a charging timer. So what I'm going to do is use my Omi charger. So we'll unplug that one and we'll plug in the Omi instead. And we'll leave that one on the charging timer because in theory it should work on the Omi. But if we look at the Omi, you'll see it's still doing that kind of strange thing that the Zappi did where it's drawing a tiny, tiny bit of power even when it's doing nothing. And you can hear that the car just switched off and has gone into sleep mode or whatever the hell it is, but it's still doing it. But that will stop after a little while. So there we go, on the screen, start of charge in four hours, 11 minutes. So let's see if it works with the Omi. Okay, it's the next morning. Let's see if it's charged. Yes, 
So charging worked with the Omi overnight, 104 miles were added and we went from 18% to 64%. So that's £2.66 for four hours worth of seven kilowatt charging. So that equates to about two and a half pence per mile. So uh, really cheap, isn't it? So I've had this car for um, almost three months. Unfortunately, it goes back tomorrow. It's a real shame because I do, I love this car and this is one of very few issues I've had with it, but it has persisted since the beginning. So obviously the moment I first had um, an issue with charging, um, I went straight onto the My Energy website. My Energy are the company that make the Zappi. And there was already a thread there that was started on 12th of January. There's 339 posts. It's obviously affecting a lot of people. So this is from the uh, CTO of My Energy, Chris. Unfortunately, we have received messages from a small number of Renault Megane users who report that their Zappi goes to charge delayed. This is likely down to a difference in the way that Renault and My Energy have interpreted the standard for EV charging. Um, and then there's some numbers there. Uh, this is ironic, as our lead EVSE engineer is French, and a lot of our development was carried out on a Renault Zoe, which still charges perfectly. So something new in the Renault Megane that we need to understand. I'm just going to jump in there quickly and just say that the Megane and the Nissan Aria are based on the same platform, and I don't think this affects the Aria, as far as I'm aware. So um, I've certainly got a friend who's got an Aria, and I think he's fine with the Zappi. So anyway, something weird just about the Megane. Anyway, in the past we've worked very closely with car manufacturers when problems like this occur and the issue has been solved with the firmware update um, either in Zappi or the EV itself. They were unable to find the right person at Renault to talk to um, and they were just asking if anyone, any Megane drivers were near their head office in Grimsby if they could pop down and have a look. Anyway, Renault it seems did jump on the case quite quickly and they got over there and they got a load of data. Um, so that was back in January. So fast forward to the end of June. This was seven days ago that this um, post was added. Some good news to share. The testing yesterday with Renault went very well. This thread is very, very long and there was lots of little updates from my energy because obviously they were um, just as frustrated as there's all of us. So the testing yesterday with Renault went very well and the updated Megane charged perfectly in all cases. Renault are now hoping for the software release to be available at the beginning of July. However, to avoid disappointment, They've asked that customers with Megans do not contact their dealer until further notice confirming the software is available. In other words, stop bothering all the Renault dealers that are probably sick of this issue. At this point, we've, we understand that the update will require a visit to the dealer. However, Renault will provide more details once they're ready for the firmware to be formally released. Now, there's conflicting reports on this because some people on, the, on this forum have said that dealers are saying it will be an over-the-air update that will sort it out because this car does have over-the-air updates. But that sounds like it might be something you have to go into the dealer to sort out. Um, I don't really see the point of over-the-air updates um, if you can't update everything. That's the only thing. I mean, in a Tesla, and I'm no Tesla fanboy, really, but in a Tesla, it updates everything. I don't think there's any part of the car that it can't update over the air. And they do regular over-the-air updates. Like, I mean, when I had a Model 3, I must have had three or four in the space of three months. Um, might have been, been more updates. So uh, anyway, um, over the air updates I think are great, but um, only if it can do everything in the car. Tesla are more like a software company, so they've cracked it, but uh, Legacy Automotive, I guess, struggled a little bit. Renault have a fix, and it will get fixed, apparently, at the beginning of July. Now, unfortunately, this car does go back tomorrow, so I'm not going to be able to test that. So I'm going to have to leave this as an issue that's hanging a little bit, but I did I did want to do an episode about it, just so if you have a Megan and you have a Zappi, in fact, not just Zappi, sorry, because it also does affect other AC chargers on occasion as well, apparently. And in fact, it worked last night on the Omi, but the other day it actually didn't with the Omi, but um, I, I wasn't sure whether that was the car in that case or just the it being too stretched out of the commando socket and uh, maybe it wasn't connected properly, I don't know. So, but, but as far as I'm aware, it's generally fine with Omi and Zappi is one of the issues. In other words, yes, there's an issue with the Megane and the Zappi and potentially other AC chargers. Yes, Renault have found a fix. Yes, there will be a firmware update. I've no idea whether it's going to be over the air or into the dealer. Anyway, other than that, this car is great and I will try and do an episode about that as well. But uh, for now, I think that's all I'm going to say on the matter. Um, if you've got any comments, if you've got a Megane and you've had issues as well, then do let me know. And... Um, Thank you very much for watching. Please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other videos. And I'll be back soon. Bye for now.